Hi there. In this video I'll be working on a Hotpoint EW74 cooker and specifically on the removal and replacing of the top oven thermostat. Oven thermostats are generally very similar in appearance and how they fit. So in this respect the video could be related to any number of other makes and models. However, the access to these thermostats will vary depending on which make and model you have. The first thing to do is disconnect it. Because of the very high voltage used by cookers, it's best if you switch the appliance off from the mains and remove the fuse from the main box. At the very least, switch off the unit from the wall socket and remove that fuse. Under no circumstances, work on a cooker while it's still connected to the mains power supply. Removing the hob top is the next course of action, and this one is held on by two screws under the fascia panel and two at the back. To get the screws under the fascia panel, you'll need to remove the control knobs and the clock buttons. These knobs come off easily if you leave them off. So they go back on the correct control, place them on a piece of wood or something in the order they were removed. This way you can put them to one side until needed for refitting. The buttons are all the same so there's no need to segregate them. Just pull them off and put them in a container to keep them safe. Under the fascia are two screws that hold it on. When these have been removed, slide it to the left and it will unhook from a couple of brackets on the cabinet. Be careful how you remove the fascia because there are two neons attached and if you're too heavy handed you could break either or both of them. Having said that, they're not the easiest things in the world to remove, but they do need to come off or you'll be left with the fascia panel hanging suspended by these neon wires. With the fascia panel off you can see the fixing brackets which it hooked into and the hub fixing screws above them. These screws are the only things holding the front of the hob on, but as you can see access to them is quite long-winded. Remove the screws and go to the back of the cooker. There's a number of screws here, but only the bottom two hold the hob on. The others hold two brackets which fit across the hot plates, so don't undo these. Lift the hob up very carefully, because on this model there's at least one wire which is, to my way of thinking, much too short. And if you just lift the hob, you'll bend the terminal it connects to. And if not rectified before refitting, it will short out one of the elements. The terminal blocks come apart quite easily if you squeeze the levers either side and prise them apart with a screwdriver. Although they look the same, they are in fact opposites and can't be reconnected the wrong way, so there's no need to label them. The thermostat file, which is the temperature sensing part of the thermostat, is located close to the heater element. It can be clipped or screwed onto the side or rear wall of the oven. In this case it's just clipped in place, so a flat bladed screwdriver will lever it out easily. To be able to withdraw the file from the oven you'll need to remove the back panel of the cooker, which is held on by a number of screws. On this cooker the panel hinges outwards, so it doesn't need to come right off, but on other models you may have to completely remove it. If you're changing the thermostat because it's faulty or not working, then no special care need be taken in its removal. But if you're taking it out for any other reason, then try not to bend the capillary tube too much, or damage the file in any way, or you may have to replace it. On twin oven cookers like this one, the thermostat capillary tubes tend to get entwined, so don't just pull it out of the wiring loom, even if you don't need it anymore, because you may just damage the other thermostat in the process. Take a note on which way round the capillary tube loops onto the little hooks and brackets in the cabinet for when it comes to replacing it. The regulator part of the thermostat is slotted into the rear of the oven control switch and it can easily be levered out with the aid of a small screwdriver. Once again, make a note or take a photo of the wires on the stat, although the one to watch out for really is the earth wire, the green and yellow. Just make sure this one's on the correct terminal or you could end up blowing a fuse or worse. If the new thermostat differs from the one you've just removed, don't be too alarmed, because manufacturers do change suppliers from time to time. So providing all the relevant information was given to the retailer, your new stat should work just like the previous one. Unravel the capillary tube rather than just pulling it out, or you could cause it to bend violently and snap. <clears throat> Replacing the thermostat is relatively easy, but it may be worth noting that the closer to the cabinet the capillary tube is, the less likely it is to touch wires on the hob when it's refitted. So if you fit the stat under the wires from the control switch, it will place the capillary tube on top of the cabinet. 
Another thing to watch out for is a flat edge on the shaft of the thermostat. This fits into a recess on the rear of the oven switch. The whole assembly clicks into place and is held on by two retaining tabs on the bracket which is fitted to the switch. You may need to refer to your diagram or photo before refitting the wires, but be sure to get the earth wire on the correct terminal. Retrace the capillary tube around the hooks or cutouts in the cabinet and don't make the bends too sharp or you could damage the thermostat. It's far better to have a looping bend rather than a sharp right angled one. Don't push too much capillary tube into the oven. It's better to pull through just enough to fit the file correctly rather than pushing too much through and having to feed it back out again, where it could get caught up and bent. When you're satisfied the thermostat's located correctly and the capillary tube is secured, replace the rear panel and fit the screws. As I said earlier, these terminal blocks can't be fitted wrongly because there's a male and a female connector on the hob and the same on the cooker. Therefore the male on the hob fits the female on the cooker and vice versa. Even the pin connections are shaped so they'll only fit in one position. At the beginning of this video I mentioned that you need to watch out for the hob hot LEDs and how one of the wires pulls on a terminal. Be aware of this and check it before replacing the top or you could find it blowing a fuse and wonder why. Make sure the hob's sitting square on the cooker before you start replacing the front screws. Fortunately the neons go back much easier than they came out, but be sure to check the wire has gone inside the cabinet or the fascia panel won't fit properly. Hook the top of the panel onto the retaining brackets and slide it to the right. If the fascia is on properly, the holes in it should line up with the holes in the cabinet. So fit the screws and tighten them. Now bring over all the control knobs you previously put on a piece of wood and they'll all be in the right order for refitting. The buttons just push on and they're all the same anyway so it doesn't really matter which order they go back on in. To finish up just replace the two screws at the back of the hob and the cooker's ready to test. Just as a precaution it may be wise before you reconnect it to the mains just to do a continuity test. Switch all the elements on including the ovens and put one of the meter probes on the earth terminal and the other on the positive. If all's well you shouldn't get a reading. Now try it between the negative and earth. Once again there should be no reading. If there is, turn all the elements off and try them one at a time to isolate which one is faulty. Only when they check out OK, reconnect the cooker. On behalf of Selfix UK, we'd like to thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting. Goodbye.